modern foot soldier is not stopped by snow, cold, or rugged terrain. Moving, fighting, living in deep snow and extreme cold are all part of a day's work for men who know what to do and how to do it. A ski trail is broken out several hours before the advance of the main body of an infantry rifle company, now in a regimental reserve area, preparing to start out on a special two-day combat mission into enemy territory. Skis are conditioned for heavy going over cross-country terrain. Hot pine tar is applied as a protective coating. Care is taken in loading the Accio, which is used for carrying equipment over snow and ice as the company prepares to make itself self-sufficient on the march. When the temperature is low, water canteens are protected against freezing, and having the canteen not quite full keeps it from cracking. The rucksack makes carrying easier and balance on skis better. Free movement is essential. Sleeping bags are left behind as stoves will be used in the tents at night on this mission. Extra ski tips are taken for emergency. Oil is wiped off all metal parts as oil freezes in extreme cold and causes sluggish gun action and stoppages. Items are stowed systematically for quick unloading and quick use. Heavy articles go in first and to the rear. Lighter ones go on top. The Accio is a type of toboggan with rounded shallow bottom gives great mobility. Loads are covered and lashed. All used batteries are replaced by fresh cold weather ones. The radio is equipped with special oversized dial knobs for easier handling with heavy mittens. Men are spared as much exertion as possible. Over snow vehicles will tow a sled carrying loaded Accios for part of the march. The company commander briefs the platoon leaders. The mission is a surprise attack behind enemy lines. The company will bivouac tonight well beyond our own regimental outpost, then night march to reach the enemy station at daylight, destroy it, and return to this base safe. Course plot with estimated azimuths and distances is prepared before starting. The company falls in for inspection prior to setting out on his mission. Sunglasses are worn to prevent snow blindness. Staying on the chilly side to start means they'll be just right while on the march. Too much clothing can be as harmful as too little. Ski equipment is inspected. Trails are well marked in the reserve area. The going is good, but several hours ahead of the company, the trail breakers leading the way to the enemy outpost have their job cut out for them. Breaking a trail is slow work. A two-track trail would do for ski troops, but a three-track trail is required for the Accios. White trousers with the dark tops make best camouflage on this kind of mission. Brush and bows are cut away for easy passage. Rotation of jobs evens up the work. There are no star parts. Everyone takes his turn as leading man. Men are relieved before they become overheated or exhausted. Turnabout applies to squads as well. The second squad will take over while this squad drops back in reserve. The trail breakers come to an obstruction. The squad leader signals to detour around it. The trail is marked to guide the company. Number one makes the turn needlessly wide. 
Number two sees this and cuts off the curve, shortening it. All trails are kept as short as possible. The company commander maintains a double check on direction as the main body of the company swings along the trail. At every change of direction, the azimuth and distance are entered in a logbook. Trail breakers are responsible for maintaining direction of march and log of march. In extreme cold, the dry compass gives best results. The liquid filled may have sluggish action. Pace setters establish a steady rate of march, but the movement of each skier is flexible within the column so that adjustments to maintain pace can be made gradually and changes in terrain can be taken in stride. Even in extreme cold, when we exercise, we sweat. Expect it. Excessive perspiration in very cold air brings on chill and frostbite. Guard against it. Controlled ventilation of garments helps. But remember to button up even when the column stops for only a short rest halt. Clothing is determined by the task. In general, wear heavy dress for light work, light dress for heavy work, and when you stop, button up and save that heat. Frozen lakes provide natural trails. Tracks are kept within concealing shadows when possible. Trees throw very long shadows in the north. A broken ski pointing. In case of mishap, the column is not held up. And a soldier is never left alone in extreme cold. They'll fall in with the column again, or overtake it at the next rest halt. The regimental outpost is directly ahead. Before passing beyond its security, the company takes its midday rest halt but flank security patrols are posted. There is always danger of surprise attacks, swift sorties by enemies on skis. Parkas are put on to keep from chilling. Skis are wiped off before snow freezes on them. In cold and snow, the individual carries great personal responsibility. Skiers check each other for frostbite. Cheeks, nose, ears, all extremities are vulnerable. Frostbite doesn't always ring the bell before it drops in. Unless someone tells us, first awareness of frostbite may be when we stop feeling the sting of the cold wind. Never use snow on frostbite. Thaw it out slowly by the heat of your hands. Never rub. If hands are frostbitten, thaw them out under the armpits. Sip water. Don't gulp it when tired or overheated. Hot chow and hot coffee brought up from the base. Insulated containers hold food hot for 12 hours or more, even in coldest weather. Hot food on a cold march builds morale. Food will stay hotter if eaten right out of the can. Try not to sit on snow. It melts on the clothes and lessens insulating qualities against the cold. This is as far as the weasels go. From here on, everything must be man-drawn or man-carried. Skiers harness themselves in tandem to an Akio. The Akio carries up to a 200 pound load. The regimental outpost. The company now will be on its own. Training and proper conditioning will pay off. Obstacles are taken on a broad front by multiple tracks. 
No time is lost. The rear man braces himself and acts as a brake. Enemy plane overhead. Keep heads down. Don't move. This rule holds for the full company or for the smaller trail breaking squads. All clear again. Our trail breakers come to a frozen stream. Frozen streams often have overflows of water, even in coldest weather. The ice cracks, water underneath seeps up and is prevented from freezing by the blanket of snow. If a quick detour is possible, it is made. If not, a bridge is laid on the ice to prevent wet feet and frozen skis. Work is started on the needed bridge. The work progresses. Bows and snow make a firm packing. The bridge is completed. Now feet and skis are kept dry in crossing. The platoon leader takes the azimuth for the last leg of the afternoon march before coming into the bivouac area. An enlarged plan of the bivouac area is sketched in the snow by the platoon leader and he indicates the area to which each platoon will be guided and where it will bed down for the night. Bivouacs in cold and snow call for level ground above the intensely frigid valley protected from the wind and with good tree cover. Platoon set up inner perimeter security. Much care is required in placing guns because more time is needed to make emergency changes. Bows help make a firm base. Thick snow will stop most bullets, muffle the effect of shell bursts. The NCO indicates that the machine gun position be changed to use protection of nearby snowbank. Ski patrols meet at the outpost and exchange notes. They will shuttle back and forth over their positions at the outer perimeter. Tents are erected. Cross tree latrines with wind breaks. Hmm, just about right. Weapons and skis are left outdoors. If taken inside, moisture condenses on them. Keep track of equipment. Small articles especially have a way of disappearing in deep snow. Or if left on the snow, even a light wind drifting the snow is enough to cover them and wipe out all traces. Bows placed under sleds keep them from freezing to the snow and ready for a quick start. Bows are used for tent floors, firewood for stoves. Snow is used for drinking water. This soldier would get more water if he would pack the snow tightly into the pan. Using wood for fuel saves lugging along gasoline on the march. Darkness will conceal the smoke. Bows insulate the sleepers against cold. Enough water is melted for the next day's use, too. It's slow work and is done only when natural water is not handy under the frozen surface of streams or lakes. Ice is used if available. One set of dry clothing is always held in reserve. Boil water for one minute or use purification tablets. Men prepare for sleep. A fire guard is assigned to tend the fire and remain alert. Fire guards relieve each other through the night. One man is always awake to watch and tend the stove. Each platoon has an alert squad. 
The alert squad sleeps, but is fully dressed, ready for instant action. The camp rests. In cold, clear air, moonlight is brilliant, and sound travels far. Small sounds sound big. This is no place for a nervous or trigger-happy patrol. In the extreme cold of night, the outposts are relieved often. With several hours of darkness still ahead, the company starts out. Camp is broken. Equipment not needed for the attack is left behind under a small guard. This is critical territory. What's that? Fresh ski tracks and not made by our own men. Judging from ski pole marks, it is a small enemy patrol going in that direction. Several men are deployed down the enemy trail. They will be careful to avoid enemy mines. The main body of the company presses on. Should the enemy return this way, they will be ambushed. The element of surprise in the attack will be maintained. Two men remain to warn the oncoming company. Daylight is not too far off. The trail breakers start two parallel trails for speedier advance. Closer still, these two trails will branch out to half a dozen, like the spreading delta of a river, for better deployment of the ski troops. There it is, our objective, the enemy station. The platoon leader studies the enemy layout. The company commander joins him. The weapons platoon sets up firing positions with snow and tree protection. 60 millimeter mortar for targets of opportunity and to cover withdrawal. Deep snow and heavy clothing slow down normal action. But even all bundled up, unusual skill can be developed. Many functions performed by fingers are done by the whole hands. Keep hands covered. Bare hands get frostbitten, but even more, touching frozen metal or wood barehanded can blister the skin deep as a bad burn. Keep eye and cheek from contact with parts of gun. The ski troops advance silently. But the enemy outpost is not taken completely by surprise, and they prepare a surprise of their own. One of our men is hit. The medical aid man is signaled. The assault platoon moves in faster for the attack. The wounded man is given prompt evacuation. Unless the wound needs immediate attention, the one thought is to get the man out of that spot. Our machine gun covers the advance. The Akio sled affords smooth going. They take it easy, but lose no time. The enemy machine gun is ready to fire again, but this time, and that's that. Short work is made of the enemy supply shack. Snow doesn't stop incendiaries employing magnesium. Melting snow can help to spread the blaze. The objective has been reached, the enemy station destroyed. But the mission is not yet completed. Equally vital is the safe return of our company. Skis make for a swift withdrawal. When left in this reversed position, the skier steps into skis headed directly for the rear assembly area. Withdrawal has been carefully planned, orderly executed. Nothing is left to chance. The multiple trails bring the ski troops swiftly to the single trail again, the home trail. They pick up speed, but march discipline and pace are maintained. Anti-personnel mines form one more surprise package for the enemy. The ski smooths out the snow, concealing the mine's hiding place. Mines add security as the company returns swiftly to last night's bivouac area, picking up the supply guard left there on the advance. Close formation is maintained. Danger is still present. The enemy might try to cut into our column, slice it up, destroy it piecemeal. There is always that possibility in skiing country. 
The company cannot consider itself out of danger until it has retraced its trail, reached the regimental outpost, and passed through it into the reserve area. Only now can this infantry rifle company consider its operation in deep snow and extreme cold successfully accomplished.